Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo N22, and a lot of people wrote in asking me to review this one because I believe it's being sold at a clearance price right now at a bunch of U.S. retailers. So there's a new version of this powered by an N3060 processor that sells for about $230 or thereabouts. Uh, this one I got at Walmart.com for $189, and it comes with a, a N3050 processor, so it's slightly slower than the new one, and I'll point out uh, some areas during the review here where uh, you might want to look at that 3060 versus the 3050, but if this is good enough for you based on what you're about to see, then this might be a good deal to jump in on at the moment. Now, before we get into the main review, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I did purchase this with my own funds. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a look at the overall hardware here. This is an 11.3 inch TN display, a very cold display, actually a little on the blue side, uh, not the best thing to look at, but it does uh, get the job done on a relatively inexpensive computer here. Uh, you've got an interesting webcam on this one that's adjustable, so I'll pull up the camera app so you can see how it works. The webcam isn't all that great to look at as far as its video quality is concerned, but you can adjust it uh, up and down like so, and then you can flip it all the way around and it will uh, reorient itself so you can point it backwards too, so that's kind of a neat thing to see there. Uh, the screen goes all the way down to the back of your desk because it is uh, sold to schools as an education device, so they I uh, often like to see this on there so the kids don't accidentally push the screens back too far. So you can go all the way flat with it. It's not a, uh, one of those two-in-one tablet deals, but uh, you can have some flexibility as to where the screen goes, and it does seem to uh, hold itself in place very well. Uh, a lot of good specifications on this one, actually. So you have the N3050 processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and 64 gigabytes of storage. And I took it apart earlier on my Extras channel. Uh, there's also a slot for an M2 SATA card also, so you can expand the storage if you wanted to. You can fit a full-size M2 SATA drive in here as well. So pretty uh, decent specifications. One of the first upgradable uh, devices I've seen. You can't upgrade the RAM, but you can do the storage, which is not something you typically see on one of these uh, cheap laptops. So that was cool. It also has Windows 10 Pro Edition built in. It weighs about 2.8 pounds or 1.27 kilograms, uh, not too heavy. Battery life is about seven hours or so on it, so it's about average in the uh, battery life department. Uh, for ports, you have your basic uh, ports that we typically see on one of these laptops. So you have your power here, USB 3, HDMI, a micro SD card slot, and those cards will go uh, flush to the side here, so you can leave them in all the time to augment that storage if you wish. Uh, totally fanless, because it is an N3060, doesn't get too hot. Uh, two USB 2.0 ports over here, a Kensington lock right there, and you've got your analog headset adapter there for a headphone microphone combo and uh, that's pretty much it a pretty simple uh, laptop design overall the keyboard is great on this in fact of the uh, sub $200 or around $200 computers I have used I'm very pleased with the keyboard it really feels very nice it feels very rugged uh, they say it is splash proof so it might be able to survive a spill or two I haven't tried that but I would imagine it probably will uh, survive that for you it feels pretty rugged overall just because it's designed again for that education market uh, you have a trackpad here that's kind of integrated into the case. It reminds me of that HP computer we looked at a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so you don't have a click pad, but you can do a touch, uh, touch to click, of course, and you have two buttons here for uh, doing your mouse action. So let's now take a look and see how this thing performs. All right, so let's start off with some YouTube, and you can see here my uh, 1080p 60 video from my channel is playing back just fine, so you shouldn't have any issues with YouTube or Netflix or uh, any of the other online video services on your device here. Not bad and on par with other similarly powered devices from other manufacturers. And now we'll uh, check out some web browsing here. We'll go visit the NASA homepage and see how fast everything loads up on there. So uh, this is performance about consistent with what I've seen on other uh, low-cost computers. You can definitely get around the web uh, pretty quickly without any real bottlenecks. I think if you are uh, visiting sites that have more advertising and more JavaScript running, you'll see a little bit of a performance hit, but uh, generally you should have a pretty good uh, browsing experience overall, even when you've got a lot of media-rich pages like this one here at NASA. So this one's taking a little bit longer to get up and running, but uh, this is again about what I've seen on other similar devices here. And once they are loaded up, uh, you can get a pretty good browsing experience going. And on the Octane benchmark test, which measures how well it can execute web applications in Google Chrome, we got a score of 7,880, uh, which slightly edges out the Dell Inspiron 11 3000 and a Toshiba that we looked at, uh, both of which were running with the same processor. But this has more memory, and I think maybe the additional RAM uh, helps it do some of those tasks a little bit more efficiently. I'm going to put up a video on my Extras channel where I compare having a 2-gigabyte machine 
into a, a four gigabyte machine, especially when you're doing things like web browsing on a low end computer. Uh, so that should give you some insight. But I think maybe the RAM here is helping us get a slightly better performance out of this device. And doing things like Microsoft Office and Word will also perform adequately on here also. The screen obviously is a little smaller than uh, larger laptops have, but it's good enough to get your work done. This is a newsletter template that I like to uh, do a lot of testing with just because it has a lot of graphics and things in it. And as you can see here, it's wrapping text around appropriately, uh, rendering the page up pretty decently as I'm scrolling around, and uh, you shouldn't have a problem doing basic work on it. All right, let's take a look now at some gaming, and we're going to start with Minecraft. And Minecraft on these N3050 devices sometimes suffer you get uh, decent frame rates like we're seeing now and then moments of lag that get introduced. It does do a little better than other N3050 devices I have tested in the past and I believe that is due uh, to a video driver update that uh, Intel issued for their hardware which powers this and many other uh, laptops in its class. So I would suggest when you get it, uh, head over to that Lenovo support page and install that driver because when I first booted it up, Minecraft was unplayable. Uh, now it is definitely playable with still with some moments of lag uh, coming in every once in a while. Uh, the N3060 based devices, which are the newer uh, version of this computer and many others out at this price point, uh, might be the better choice just because it has more consistent Minecraft uh, performance in my experience. So uh, you may want to consider that. Uh, one review of mine to check out is the HP Stream 11 I did this year because that new one uh, is powered by the N3060. That'll give you an idea as to how Minecraft will run on this computer with that same hardware. And as for other types of games you can play on a computer like this, I would suggest things like this game called Shovel Knight, which is a newer game, but uh, it is a 2D side-scroller that doesn't really tax the hardware all that much. I have tried Counter-Strike on these uh, devices in the past, really not a playable experience. Even if you turn the settings way down, it still uh, isn't the best uh, experience you'll get, so you really can't get a, a good Counter-Strike experience for 200 bucks. But uh, these indie games work really well, a lot of retro games work well, and even games that are 10 years old or so uh, do pretty well too like Half-Life 2 and others. So this is really not a gaming device per se, but uh, there are some games like Shovel Knight and many others that do run pretty nicely on it. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate test, we get a score of 1,453. That measures uh, the computer's graphical performance, and that test puts it in line with just about every other N3050 device we have looked at over the past year. Now, I also put on there the score on that HP Stream 11 I mentioned earlier, powered by the 3060 processor. That one does slightly better on this test and a lot better in Minecraft. So that 3060 just has better uh, graphical performance. Still not enough to run AAA titles, but uh, does have a enough to give you a bit of a performance boost in things like Minecraft and other casual games. Now, I'm running Cody here with a 4K HEVC file, and one of the things that always impresses me about these little computers is the fact that they can so efficiently uh, decode video like this one, uh, which are very involved and highly compressed. And this is usually a very processor-intensive activity that uh, these cheap little Intel chips can handle without uh, any issue whatsoever. Uh, you can also play back Blu-ray MKV files on here without any problems either, so you should have a good multimedia experience. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier on is that this also has wireless AC built in, so you should be able to uh, stream movies off your NAS devices and other things uh, pretty well and be able to have that multimedia keep up with it. So overall, I think this is a pretty good value here. 189 bucks, at least on clearance at the moment I'm recording this video, uh, is a pretty good deal considering that you get 4 gigs of RAM and uh, 64 gigs of internal storage. Often these devices have 32 gigs, which just isn't enough to uh, keep all of your applications on and do the updates every once in a while. Uh, this one has that storage and that M2 slot so you could add additional storage onto it later if you wanted to. Unfortunately, the RAM is not upgradable, but again, the storage is, which is unusual to see something like that on a computer uh, at this price point. So I do think, though, if you can get a good deal on the 3060 version, you should get that one. I believe there's a quad-core version of this also that might be a little bit quicker than that. Uh, none of those will be good enough to do uh, AAA gaming or Counter-Strike or anything, but if you are looking for uh, marginal performance increases, going with the quad-core or the N3060 version of this uh, computer is recommended. So that'll do it for the Lenovo N22, and this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.